It lets only so many minutes. What time did it shut off, Dino? Okay, I'll just re-ask the question. Okay, so how many did you accumulate? At this one particular base, I accumulated 14. 14. And I had to walk two hours to get those two demerits uh, eliminated. Or, or So when you transferred, you only transferred with 12? Yes. Okay. Did you accumulate any more after that? Wait a minute. That, that, that doesn't sound right. They, all the mirrors were ceased when you went to another. Oh, they did. Okay, they didn't follow they, you. They didn't follow me. Okay. Because I, that, I don't re, we, that, that 12 didn't follow me. You're right. Okay. I forgot about that. Anyway. I'm trying to find out the bad boy moments. Trying to find out the sneaky stuff you did. Yeah, yeah tell us some of that. <laughs> I don't remember any of that. I'm, I'm politely prying here. <laughs> Did you ever get in oh, trouble? Oh, first of all, you have to get a haircut every place you go, and it was a crew cut. Had to have the crew cut. Crew cut. Practically shaved Practically. your head. Your, your, your hair was only about a quarter of an inch long. Oh, goodness. And that was, that was dated back to early times of Army life where they had to give you a crew cut because a lot of the people, a lot of the guys had lice in their hair. Oh, you wow. Know, that... You know, the farmers coming yeah, in, yeah. joining the army. And that became a custom of the army to give you a crew cut to begin with. Well, you got two of them for lumber on the floor. What were the other ones for? Uh, I had dust on my shoes. Oh, wow. That, instead of, they were shined, but they weren't dusted. You are living on the edge. I'm telling you. Like, <laughs> yeah, or they weren't lined up properly on the bed. Such a rubble. I had to have a string from bedpost to bedpost to line up the shoes on. Uh-huh. I had two pair of boots. I only wore one pair. The other pair was nailed to the floor. Shortcut. <laughs> All these shortcuts. See, it's I'm always there. Yeah. Nailed to the floor. <laughs> then I had next to that was a dress shoe. Next to that was uh, the gym shoes or called or tennis shoes, whatever uh -huh. you call it. And they had to be exactly lined up. I don't remember any shower clogs or. Did you ever play any pranks on anybody in the barracks? And yes. Do tell. <laughs> this, this comes later. Oh, it comes That's later. later. Okay. Oops, my bad. This comes later. But we had one guy that never would take a bath. That's awful. And he stunk. Yes. And he, he never did his laundry or, or had his laundry done. He always wore the same underwear all the time. And it gets worse. And yeah. you know how, to, how he remembered to put on his underwear? Yes. <laughs> But you go ahead and tell How? Us. Eh? He told you yesterday. Sure. Yellow goes in front, brown goes, goes in, in the back. back. <laughs> he told you yesterday. <laughs> oh, God. Eh. And, uh, uh, I'm just in the we meeting. all I'm got sorry. together. I'm just sorry. <laughs> 30 guys to a private room, and then we had a downstairs and an upstairs. There were 30 upstairs, too. Uh -huh. there 30 downstairs. Us 30 guys downstairs took that guy into the shower and used a GI brush on it. That, Ouch. Uh, a, a bristle brush. It wasn't a wire brush, but it was a it was a broom straw brush, like, like a broom. Like yeah, horse, it doesn't sound like it's feathery that, soft. The brush they yeah. use on horses or something. <laughs> and we brushed him and cleaned him up so good. Yeah. And gave him a... Had that new car smell? Huh? <laughs> I said, did he have that new car smell? He had that new car smell. He wouldn't get the merits for that? No. Really? We didn't... We didn't get caught doing it. Uh, no, no, I mean him and... From him being stinky when the when he 
when the officer passed him an inspection, he wouldn't notice that he was stinky and uh, get a I don't, I don't guess he didn't get any demerits for it, I recall. We just took him to the shower and, and gave yeah. him a bath. Okay. Yeah, maybe if I could get demerits for being stinky. Well, it also, it seemed, well, maybe it was one of those things when the guys get tired of it, they'll go get him a bath. <laughs> you yeah, know? He threw his underwear away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's time to get rid of the Another stains. thing we used to do, we had a shaving cream. That's back when I did wet shaves instead of electric razors. There wasn't any such thing then, electric yeah, huh? razor. <laughs> uh, toothpaste tube and a, and a shaving cream tube. You put them together and you can move the shaving cream right into the toothpaste tube if it was some... Oh, Not, oh, if it oh. wasn't full, you know. Yeah, right. You can move it without <laughs> spilling a drop. You can move that toothpaste <laughs> shaving cream into the toothpaste tube. Oh, yeah. And when the guy would go in to brush his teeth, he'd be shaving with shaving. I mean, he'd be brushing his <laughs> yeah. teeth with shaving cream. And that would get their attention. How bad? You know, yeah, that'd wake anyone up. <laughs> and we had, uh, our mattress was about that thick. And it rolled up, you know single and we got rubbers were given to you they had a a box that you could just go pick a rubber out as you left the barracks okay this is later on this wasn't then but we took this was in pre-flight training we took a a rubber and fill it with water mm -hmm. and put it between the mattress and and the spring. Okay. And then he comes he comes in and lays on that and the weight of the his body plus the springs, it would puncture that rubber and get the guy wall wet down below. Oh my god. And his pre made bed and, and all that stuff for inspection and everything. So it looked like he wet his bed. Yeah. And another thing we used to do, we used to when you make the bed with the blanket and you the hood of the bed was another blanket across the pillow. Uh-huh. And you tuck that in. And you had to make that bed real military type bedding, uh, making the bed. No wrinkles. No wrinkles. And flip a coin, and that coin is supposed to hit that blanket and flip up. Bounce up. Bounce up. That's I tight. That. You're tight, yeah. Yeah, that's tight. There's another thing we used to do Coke bottle. We had. Meant some, somehow or another, we got a hold of a Coke bottle and we'd cork it with some water in it and then put a string on the cork and it would be out of the hood on the for the pillow and there's a string there and this guy would see that string and he said he's got to get rid of that before the inspector <laughs> oh, comes no. in and inspects his bed. He pulls the cork out and the water comes down the bed. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, man. man. <laughs> that is mean. The ins the, I guess the inspector knew that because he didn't get any demerits. Yeah, yet. he just got a little fussing, huh? <laughs> and I guess at first, when it first happened, I guess the guy got demerits and, yeah. and he had to walk off the tour. Took him outside and shot him. <laughs> That's right, the thing went on. Firing a squad for you, buddy. That's right. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Where were we? I was trying to find out the good stuff. Yeah, what's well, your... another guy, he passed out drunk on the, on the bed. This was in pre-flight training at Thunderbird Field in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh-huh. This That was a, a, a resort area northwest across the little mountain that's out there, northwest of Phoenix, Thunderbird Field was out there. All drunk up, we picked his, him and his bed up and carried him out, out of sight from the base 
in the desert <laughs> in a little ravine area yeah. and just sent him down there for the night. Yeah. Bed and all. So he woke up in he the middle of the up, desert. He didn't know where in the hell he was at. How did he stay asleep all that? While y'all were carrying him out there. Passed out drunk. Oh. Okay. Could he at least see what direction he needed to go? Well, he had to get up to the top of the hill and he could see the base. Oh, but until God. he got up there to see the base, he didn't know where in the hell he was at. <laughs> and we used to short sheet the guys once in a while. You know what short sheeting is? No. You make up the bed with one sheet. You put it halfway and you fold it back and make it up. That's short sheeting him. Okay. When he tries to get in bed, uh, he's got a short sheet only a, a half of the. Oh, he man. can't let, spread out like that in the bed because it's a short sheet. Yeah. Call that short sheet in the bed. <laughs> There's one guy that was all drunk up that we that I just talked about. He was a Pretty big guy and pickled a lot apparently. And muscles, you know. He got in that bed and just punched his feet right through the seat. <laughs> and I, I guess that's why we carried him out in the desert. <laughs> so, <Showed> you. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've got to ask it so that whatever happened to the girl that sent you cookies? Did you ever stop her from sending you cookies? That was only one. Batch of cookies that I got from her. I never heard from her since. <laughs> Came to oh, an end. I really hadn't heard from her since. <laughs> Thank God. You know how many push ups he'd have to do? Yeah. And, and we got pretty close. Pretty oh, close. Ah. What's I'm dying name? to hear about when you met Granny. Oh, yeah. We'll finish. Well, that, that's later on. Okay, right? we'll finish telling us. Okay, so there you are. You're a dodo. And I finished up pre flight training at Santa Ana. Okay. I was, that's where they'd be, they made you a pilot, a bombardier, or a navigator. Okay. I was selected for pilot. I didn't that's get where it navigator started. or bombardier. Uh, bombardiers, in the beginning, were enlisted people. Bombardier wasn't even an officer. Wow. It was a later time that they changed it and he got a commission. He went through the cadet program just like we did, but he trained in aircraft for bombardier and he was commissioned an officer and got some bombardier wings. Okay. Uh, of the three, what was the chain of command? Was the pilot was the most important? The boss of the plane? Yeah, he made the decisions. who came next and who came next? Navigator and then the bombardier. Okay. Uh, so I was selected as pilot. Now the flying starts and the pay goes up. Wow. Flying pay is in there. Flying pay was 50% of your base pay. My base pay was $50, remember? 50% mm -hmm. <laughs> of that is 25. My pay went up. I'm making $75 a month now. Now you're really rolling Man, in the I'm dough. I'm in the chips. <laughs> I'm in the chips. Daddy going to go buy a new pair of shoes. Uh -huh. He don't have to win it. <laughs> and I go to Thunderbird Field in Phoenix, Arizona to primary flight school flying the Stearman Biplane aircraft, which is in that picture up there. Uh huh. Uh, back to this. Picture you can put on the iPad with the aircraft. Back to this picture. No. Okay. Here. This is. Back, I have to back up to Missoula, Montana, for a second. Okay. Okay. Uh, that that picture. Helmet and goggles and scarf and jacket that fit everybody. This was just picture taking for the all the guys. Everybody put that same helmet on and it was laced up the back like a shoe and tied up so it would fit everybody. The goggles, of course, would fit everybody. 
The scarf was one scarf. The jacket was one jacket. Even the big guys had to wear this jacket and there's, it didn't fit them right, except they could get it closed up. Sure. Incidentally, I had a 29 inch waist. A 20, oh, really? Oh my God, wow. 29 inch yeah. waist. Wow. 165 pounds. Now I weigh 155 and I got a 36 is snug. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. close. That's what I can't get over. Not even okay, close. Okay, I'm in pre-flight training. In this Stearman aircraft, <coughs> PT-17 was the designation for the Stearman aircraft for, for Army Air Corps talk. Uh, I was flying and I had an instructor pilot I had seven hours of training, and the instructor says, are you ready to solo? After seven hours? Seven hours of flight training. I, I was the first one to solo. The, the first class. one? I was the first one. Well, after seven hours, woo! Right. <laughs> the rest of them had You're to go to, the rest of them went to over eight to nine hours before they soloed. If you didn't, if you didn't get soloed by 10, you were washed out. Wow. You were washed out of pilot training. And in primary training, out of the 100 guys that was in the class, I'm a lower classman again. I'm a dodo. <laughs> you're back to being a dodo. <laughs> and But you're a better paid dodo. Better pay yes. at a dodo. I'm a seventy-five dollar dodo. Yes. Now. <laughs> That's not cheap. That's a good dodo. Uh, what was I leading up to? You're, 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 you're about to. Yeah. You're about to solo. So I said, "Are you sure I'm ready?" And he says, "I don't know. Yeah, I think you're ready, but you got to know you're ready." I said, I can do it. I can do it. So I had the, the pilot, the cadet pilot, sat in the back seat. Incidentally, he could talk to me through a funnel, through a tube, and it, it, these tubes went into both ears, and I could hear him talk to me. I through a talk funnel? To him. Well, that huh? was the intercom. There yeah, that was the intercom. <laughs> a funnel. Yeah, he talked to me through a funnel. I am so happy I was well, born during my generation. It, was a it, was a, it wasn't just a funnel like in, like you see. But Oil? It, it a, <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. <laughs> they called it a Gosport, I think. Okay. Gosport type thing. It was a funnel looking affair that he talked into to me in the back seat. I couldn't talk to him except hand signals. All I got going in my head is, is Graham Bell's pictures, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I soloed, and I made three landings solo. Nice. That's After what you had to do, solo. And you had to, he stood on the ground in the little uh, instructor shack while I soloed the airplane. He was watching me, you know. He didn't want to go with you. Well, that wouldn't well, be very yeah. solo. Huh? Uh -huh. Well, yeah. Not only that, you know, it's, it is a solo. <laughs> yeah. So. I made three landings, taxied in, and picked him up, and we flew for another hour, and then we went back to the flight line. But anyway, after that, I, I got an hour of instruction. Then I was, took the airplane solo and, and practiced all the maneuvers that he taught me that day. Spins was one of the things we had to do in the airplane. We had to, that was before I soloed, I had to spin the aircraft, learn how to do a spin recovery. In case I stalled out and spun the aircraft, I'd know how to get out of the spin. Okay. Okay. And The field elevation at Thunderbird Field was was something like 2,000, 2000 the biggest part is 2,000 feet. 
to spin the airplane, I had to be at 4,500 feet before I could do a two-turn spin, recover, and you'd have lots of altitude left. You wouldn't be anywhere near the ground yet. Uh-huh. You'd use a two-turn spin after the stall. You'd use up about 1,000 feet. Okay. So I'd recover about 3,000. Well, when the first time I spun the aircraft, when solo, I said, well, I'm going to get a little higher in case I don't recover right away. I'll be, if I start spinning the other direction, I'll have time to come out of that spin. Anyway, I got, before I did my first spin, I was at 7,500 feet. Uh huh. I said, I'm going to get a little higher. I think I'll get a little higher. <laughs> my first solo spin was at 7,500 feet. Okay. And I think I, no. I did exactly as planned. Recovered, come out of the spin, and I was still at six. You were still at six. <laughs> six <000 feet. laughs> so there wasn't any problem at all. Good. Over 6,000 feet. Yeah. You left some room for error there, huh? Yeah, I had some room for error. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was my first spin. Well, at least you kept the blue side up, you know? <laughs> okay. I got a hundred, a little over a hundred hours in that airplane. And I finished up primary, passed my check ride and all that stuff. We lost about 40% of the class were washed out. They couldn't solo or they couldn't complete their flight training uh, or they had fear of flying type things set in. You know, various things would get them washed out. Right. They went all through all that just to be washed out, at the, right? Wow. And they they went lost their seventy five dollar dodo status. <laughs> oh man! Oh, and, yeah. No shoes. <laughs> and they went back to being a no striper private. Oh my, oh my gosh. god! And I'm thinking about over forty percent of them. Forty percent was washed out. Ever ever, the next phase of training was basic. And this was a test case at that time. I, to go from primary, the Stearman biplane airplane, into twin engine. That was a test case. We went from primary flight into twin engine. Which was a test case. So in a sense, you were a test pilot. A twin engine aircraft. I, that's the AT-17. That's a fabric-covered twin engine airplane. Fabric? They call it the bamboo bomber. The bamboo bomber. Well, the 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 struts and everything, I think, were not even metal. I think there was some kind of wood. We called it the bamboo bomber. Oh my God! <laughs> and I went to Minner Air Minner Field at Bakersfield, California. First of all. I met a girl in primary training. Ah, training. met another girl. A nurse. A nurse. A cadet nurse. Ooh. Okay. And on my off time, I spent it with her all the time. And you were real close with her. I was real close with her. I got close to all of them. I got close to all of them. <laughs> I love you, Grandpa. <laughs> Did you propose to any of them, Dad? I proposed to every one of them. Did you for a night? No, no. <laughs> Did you marry any of them for 24 hours? No, I didn't do that either. Did this one bake we you cookies? Huh? No. <laughs> uh, she was a cadet nurse. We, I left primary for flight training and went to this basic and twin engine aircraft at Minner Field at Bakersfield, California. Okay. Dodo again. Dodo again. But Another dodo? Oh, higher pay. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Dog, same pay. Oh. Still $50. No, I thought you went up to 75 I did. But flight pay, 75 As long as you're flying, you had to put in four hours a month to get your flying pay. So you didn't, you went back down to 50 No. Oh, okay. 
As long as I flew my four flew hours, my four hours a month, I got flight pay. So I'm at, in twin engine now. This is instrument training in the air. Part of the flight training in twin engine is instrument training. I have the learned. last. The, when you're the upper class, you're in the instrument flight training, learning to fly instruments on the air. The first part is as learning to fly the airplane and handle it and all that stuff. It had wooden propellers. Wooden propellers. It was a. It was an airplane where the gear would raise up. Oh my God! But it was a tail dragger. We called them, you know. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Not tricycle gear. Oh Tail dragger type of thing. Very prone to ground. That's another thing about the Sherman. It's prone to ground loop real easy. Yeah, they don't I make those anymore. <laughs> you know, I never had a problem with ground loop. Really? I never ground looped an airplane. Oh, my God. Uh, I wish I had one of those wooden propellers. Yeah. Wood propellers. Oh, that'd be nice to have it hanging. Oh up yeah. There. Hanging up there on the mantle, huh? Oh, very yeah. much so. Uh, and there was uh, four of us with one instructor. Oh Lord, it got worse. Four flight student <laughs> with one instructor, and and he'd fly with each one of us an hour, and then. And then when we'd solo the aircraft, we'd fly it on our own, plus getting an hour or two, but then we'd drop fly a solo. Every aircraft we got a little over 100 hours in, each one. That was a requirement? And a minimum see, of 100? Backing up, uh, I soloed. On February the 29th, 1944, I soloed the first airplane, uh, my first solo flight. Uh huh. I was leading up to something. The nurse? <laughs> no. <laughs> they were past here. Well, you just did 100 hours. So you did 100 yeah. hours, you're back to being dodo. Yeah. Uh, the first half of the training is, is dodo, and the second half is your upper class. Okay, let's see. Instrument training. The, the, the twin engine was a tail dragger. That was prone to, That was prone for ground looping also. Right. But I never had any problem with that. And the engine, you had to apply rudder as you revved up the engine because the torque of the engine would want to turn it left. Seriously? Yes, would want to turn it left. Yeah. Counteracting that with rudder control, I could keep the aircraft straight. Uh huh. I had to keep the aircraft from ground looping and landing with the, with the rudder control. If you let it wander, too far, you couldn't stop it. It's ground loop. Meaning loop spinning like this on the ground. Anyway, that was a problem on the aircraft. And a lot of guys were washed out. They couldn't they couldn't fly the airplane. It was constantly ground looping. They just couldn't get the feel of it. And they the the instructor wouldn't solo him if he couldn't if he couldn't control Well, yeah, if you can't control it on the ground, yeah. God only knows you're not going to be able to yeah. control it. <laughs> so they wouldn't solo him, and they'd wash him out. Wash him out, meaning. He, now you said over forty percent were washed out during that time in your in your training. Well, it, it would vary between between thirty five and forty five percent. Did any the of them crash? Uh, no, none has crashed in my training so far. Okay, okay. That's that. We're getting to that. We didn't have any aircraft accidents in primary flight school, but not even one. Okay. Of the people that soloed. Ah, okay. The washouts, you were gone. Yeah, they didn't give them time to crash. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. 
primary pleasure. But we're in Bakersfield, California. I met another girl. Oh, you don't say. Her name was Jodo. Her name was Jodo. Jodo. <laughs> You're kidding. Jodo. Was You're making name. that up, Gramps. No, her name was Jodo. You're making that up. I just will not believe that. Uh, her, her nickname was Jodo. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Why? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah, why? Her why was her nickname Dodo? She's a Dodo. I told her, I'm an upper class. You're a Dodo. You're, oh, my God. <laughs> Dad, we want to know why she, her nickname was Dodo. I don't remember. Don't remember. I don't think I ever knew. That convenient amnesia kicks <laughs> yes, in. Yes, uh-huh. I have been complimenting you on your memory, and now in the good stuff. All of a sudden. Yeah, yeah I don't remember. Uh... <laughs> Not in front of the girls. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> Met another. Now I'm, in, I'm in instrument. I'm an upper class now, and I'm in instrument flight training. Okay. In the aircraft. This instructor thought I was really good. It's because you are. Instrument flight training, doing these maneuvers where I got to control the airspeed and do a 500 foot descent and do a certain pattern all the time, climbing 500 feet, level off, do another 360 turn or 270 turn and go this way. And there was a pattern you had to do. He thought I was really good. He told the flight examiner for the basic training, he said, you got to fly with this guy. And let him take you through the, those basic maneuvers. He does it exactly right every time. Ah, look at you. <laughs> Wouldn't get lost. I flew the... Of course, I knew a little bit about the instrumentation already from being around aircraft all my teenage years. But uh, not, not to the extent of... I had an artificial horizon that I banked the aircraft the rudders and ailerons and it was a wheel in the in the in the twin engine wheel. The steerman had a stick. Uh-huh. And so I gave this uh, instructor pilot, a flight examiner, this we went out to the aircraft, cranked it up, we took off. I even did a Instrument takeoff <laughs> under the hood. Uh huh. It kept it straight. We took off and raised the gear and everything. And he just sat there. Did good. Climbed up to a certain altitude. And he said, Do me a, the V1 pattern. 